This is a 2010 Honda CRV, and I'm changing the catalytic converter on it. I'm changing both uh, the first and the second cat. And so I basically uh, the the first catalytic converter is right here. This is basically a heat heat shield that it has on it, right under that. Uh, that's where the cat is located. That's the first one, and that's gonna run you back about three thousand dollars if you go to the dealership. And the second one is uh, attached to this one under it, and um, I can't remember how much that one that one was. I might put it on the description. It's about fifteen hundred dollars, I believe. So uh, we gotta remove the sensor first, and then the heat sh heat shield. But before we address that, I wanna show you something. This is the second one. Notice there's one, two, and three bolts on the other end. There's another one. This is a triangular shaped connector here. Um, and these bolts are actually, by the way, that's the front of the vehicle up there. So this is the exhaust pipe right here. And it connects here to the second cat, the catalytic converter right here. So this one goes down and connects to the first. So, as you can tell, these bolts almost disappeared because of the rust. So, I tried extractors. So, these are how they look like. These are bolt extractors or uh, nut extractors. And um, if, if you notice, they have different sizes. So, you basically have to put uh, attach one wherever it fits. And then you use either, in this case, is a 3/8 uh, drive for your uh, ratchet, or you can use whatever size uh, socket you can attach to the outer area of this. You can use that too. Uh, I try heat by using this propane uh, torch, and unfortunately, that did not work either. I tried the extractor in combination with the heat; it didn't do anything. So, I'm re I resorted to one last thing. It's called an angle grinder. And I got this one from uh, Harbor Freight. With the, with the metal cutter right here. If you look up here, this is the nut. And that bolt is connected to the, your catalytic converter. It comes from this side, that way. And this is where you attach the nut. So when you buy the the catalytic converter, uh, you should it should come with a bolt and make sure it does, and have and make sure that the nut also comes with it, because as you can tell, I cannot reuse this anymore. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this uh, the bolt and the nut together right through here, and uh, that should allow me to eventually uh, push it back this way and separate the two. Parts. I recommend that the night before you do all this, uh, pour some penetrating fluid in. I basically sprayed all the bolts, everything that I could think of that I needed to remove uh, the night before. I did it like twice that night and this morning. So I'm here on top of the engine now and if you look over, this green wire is the wire that belongs to your uh, bank one sensor one. That's the first sensor in the CAD, and that's that connects to a connector right over there. As you can tell, that's a connector. So we got to remove this connector. I press the connector. I mean, I press the, the button right here, and when I did that, the, the connector in the back, you see how it's coming off? Boom, it's out. So it has been disconnected now. When you're pulling this off, there's actually like a little tab right in here. If you push it in, you can pull this out. Uh, that little tab right here and that removes it from this this bracket right here and now that we have it off now our sensor we can actually remove it so that that way we can get it and get the sensor out of the way so we can remove the heat shield but um, to remove this sensor you need a special tool and this tool is a uh, the O2 sensor removal tool and as you can tell it has a, a gap right here and this is basically for the wire so that when you're removing um, you remove the sensor with this with this socket 
it fits perfectly in and it, it leaves room for the wire to hang off from then for this we use a 3 8 uh, ratchet to uh, remove it from here in case you were wondering the size 7, seven eighths. All right, so I ended up uh, attaching an extension to it so I can have some room to move in there and uh, this extension you just got to put really hard oh man this thing is tough <clears throat> there you go so now it's loose and now we can remove it right, so let me just remove this stretch it off and now I should be able to remove it by hand After doing this by hand, this is your sensor. Uh, the sensor has been removed. Next, and we're gonna have to remove a few bolts. This one right here, one right here, and one here. So we're gonna use a 12 millimeter uh, socket and remove it. Oh, this was kind of good. But it's easy to remove. See this one. Yep, that was easy too. So I guess a penetrating fluid was helpful. Let's try that one. I don't remember pouring any penetrating fluid on this one. Oh yeah, this one is tough. Yeah, I didn't put any penetrating fluid on that one. I was able to loosen it. Uh, but now it's still kind of like rough to remove it. But it is coming off. Which is good. Even though, like, I might be able to deal with it even without there, because I can probably remove the heat shit without it, because they were rusted all over it. But I still needed to remove it. So this is how that bolt looks. And uh, you see, it's all rusted everywhere. But now the heat shield should be loose, because I removed the other two bolts that look identical to this one. And uh, here's your heat shield. Uh, the only thing you notice is like there's not much space in here. There's space in between the engine and this area here. Uh, I think they call this the crawl or something like that. Um, it's too small. It's like about four and a half inches this way. And uh, I know the cat, the catalytic converter is a little bit big, uh, wider. Like certain areas are about five inches. So I need room. And uh, next, we're gonna show you. I'm gonna show you how to remove this. This crawl from here uh, that way you have more space to work with up here and at the same time we can remove the cat right from the top because as you can tell there's no gap down there where you can pass the cat a little converter to once you remove it but well, there's four bolts right over here one here one there actually this is a, a nut but the bolts are from the engine and then there's another one on the bottom another one on the other bottom part so i think i'm going to have to lubricate this area i got to put some penetrating fluid here and let it sit, sit for a couple of hours before I start messing with it. All right, so let me show you this. So this is uh, pen penetrating fluid. And I'm gonna spray the bolt right here with it. And do the same thing with the other one here. Oh, great. Anyways, uh, you spray the bolts. And uh, we gotta find the other ones down there. And once I find them, I'm gonna do exactly what I just did. And uh, just in case this is the front of the car, go look that way, that's the back of the car. And if you look up, a little nearby where the, the oil filter is, that bolt, this bolt with a spring on it, that bolt with a spring on it right there that is one of the bolts we got to remove because this is a second catalytic converter uh, pipe and the first one is the one above it that is attached to it right up there so that's the second that's the first cat up there and this is the second that's the pipe that connects to the second this is one bolt and the other one that we got to remove is right there that I got like a six inch extension here with a 12 mil socket and my ratchet obviously and I loosened it up 
and I actually had to ended up using a breaker bar to help me with it just because it was very tight but you see how loose it is um, now what you, you tend to, what you got to do with this is when you loosen it up that when it's that tight you loosen it up it's full of rust just tighten it like this and then loosen it and go back and forth back and forth and you're gonna feel a lot of rust coming off it and that's the whole point you want all that rust to come off as you're loosening it up so that it doesn't get stuck with a piece of rust and then it breaks off and then the bolt breaks off so you do that back and forth until all that rust comes off and it's easier to remove by hand so it doesn't break off and I think we should be almost done with this there it is that's your bolt this is what came off from the second one as you can tell the bolt broke I got a spring I got a head of the bolt right here I got a head of the bolt completely broken looks like it was all rusted this is how it looks once you remove the two bolts see now it's loose so the second the second cat right here is loose and if you look back there the only thing that's holding it up right now is the three bolts that I mentioned earlier we got to cut them off because they're all rusted together okay so you see that the orange area there that orange area you see my hand right here this is a connector so the reason the way I was able to do that is if you look in front of the car my hand is reaching in through the side almost where the wheel is and you reach right in here you should be able to have access to the connector right over there so let me see if I can get through okay there we go I think. Yeah, so there's a tab here you just push it down with your finger right there push it down and you should be able to pull the connector off and at the same time you will notice that your wire is actually hooked if you have an OEM part, it's gonna be hooked to this little thing right here. All you gotta do is just push it out, and then um, we have our sensor here. And this sensor, you have to use a adjustable wrench. And it's pretty, it's big and it's tough. It's easier to it help us remove the sensor, especially if the sensor is stuck. It help us remove it, and once it's loose be able to remove it by hand but if it's too rust it's too rusted to remove it by hand then I suggest you keep using your wrench or your adjustable wrench whatever you have so here is a sensor without connector I want to try to cut this off with my grinder um, I don't, I don't want to cut the whole bolt off I just want to cut the nut as much as I can so Let's see now.
There it is. Bolt is off. So, uh, one more to go. In case you were wondering, this is how it looks when you cut them off. Cut that one off. Cut that one off. The other end, I managed to cut the nut off, just a piece of it, and managed to unscrew it. Let's see if I can get around it. There it is. So now the next step is to push this in. So you push it in, and I see so you can tell there's a gasket right here. It came off with it. And then just try to wiggle it around. The piece that end that was attached over there that we unscrewed earlier. That piece is already loose, so it should be able to come. This should be able to come off, and I should be able to pull this completely off now. As you can tell, it's basically coming completely off. Like this. Oh. Yeah, that's the bottom of the other cat, the other cat little converter. That's the first one over there, and now the second one is right here. So I want to take this out and I'll show you how it looks. All right, so this is the cat. See, managed to, we just removed the, the nut from this one, but the bolt here cut off, cut off the second bolt. As you can tell, the bolts are attached to the catalytic converter, like I said earlier. So as long as you cut off the, even the nut here or the bolt, and then we just pull it out, it should be fine. And uh, this is where all two sensor goes. And this is where the first catalytic converter goes. And as you can tell, this hole here, the two holes, that's for the two bolts that we I removed earlier from under the car. You can look inside and see if there's any damages to it. It doesn't look like there's any damages to this cat. Uh, and if you look on in this hole, let me see if I can get anything out. See? See all that? I just realized that the reason why that was there was actually from the... It was a, it's, a, it's like a gasket that goes on this side so i guess somehow it overheated it, over time you know it, it gives out i guess damage so that's our gasket from before so we have a new gasket anyways no biggie uh, what we want to do is we want to make sure you clean the mating surfaces so like for instance the new cat obviously is going to be clean from here but the exhaust that gets attached to that, make sure you clean it well, so that way you have a nice flat surface to connect to the, the new catalytic converter. So if you're doing what I'm doing, this is the exhaust. See, that's the back of the car. So this is the, ex the mating surface for the catalytic converter. So you take a wire brush, remove any excess rust or anything extra that is on it. Um, I'll probably look look carefully at this, start filling through to make sure everything is flat. But I'm gonna be doing this for a while, make sure that this is nice and clean. And once I feel that this is very clean, then I'll go and work on the on the first catalytic converter. I hope that the hard part is done. So let's see what we can do here. So again, we gotta this crow from here. I'm gonna, I gotta remove it completely. So you want to remove this weather shield right here. Easy to remove, you just pull it off. Just put that on the side. Next, we want to remove a few clips. I remove that clip here. Gotta remove that clip right there. And uh, we're gonna remove that clip. That clip. And that clip now in case you did not know why I'm doing this is because the gap between here and here is too small for me to remove the, the catalytic converter down there first thing is remove this clip I have a clip remover just go like this just pull it up there it is it's the first clip just make sure you put it on the side so you don't lose it uh, and the idea is that we're gonna eventually remove this so now that's loose. Now we're gonna go to the next clip. I have that one. Uh, actually, I'm just gonna remove the, this clip for now. And uh, because removing clips are kind of like. Um, 
are time time consuming and they're gonna waste a lot of video time. Uh, I'm not gonna record the rest of them. I'm just gonna I just pointed out where they were and then all you gotta do is make sure you remove them. And now that I removed the four clips, the one here, the one there, the one there, the one at the end. Next we gotta remove this um, this rubber boot on the windshield wiper because if you notice the windshield wiper is right like right smack in the middle of this plastic cover here that we gotta remove and uh, we're gonna do the same thing with this the way you do it is that you put you place something something flat and you kind of like wiggle it right under the boot and then it should uh, it should come up once you put that in there and you wiggle it out now it exposes a, a, a nut so we're gonna do the same thing here for this one I'm gonna wiggle something right under something flat the boot comes off exposing the nut so now it's time to remove the nut so to do that we're gonna need a 17 millimeter socket so so a 17 millimeter socket you try to remove this oh man it's getting ridiculously difficult with one hand oh, let me see if I can loosen it up with both hands be right back all right that was that was a little bit tough but I was able to loosen it now should be able to remove it by hand there's the first one by hand and um, just in case uh, you should always mark them if you're not sure where to put the windshield wipers but um, you can sort of tell which one is which because this one curves downward as you see you can see it curves downward and then up and this one goes straight up it curves a little bit downward and uh, you can mark the you can put a tape somewhere along the line where you usually want them and same thing over there on the other one so that way when you place them back in again you can guide yourself by the tape so it's a way to remind yourself that that's where you you want to put your windshield wiper so this one again and remove the second one gonna remove the second nut there it is all right so now time to remove the wipers now to remove the wipers i'm going to lower the hood so that way I have space so that I can work up here. All right, so with the hood down, now I'm able to pick this one up like that. And you lift it up. Now that that I lifted it up, now what you got to do is you got to figure out a way to to wiggle this out of here. All right, again, uh, what I did is that I grabbed this plier. I put the bottom piece of the plier on the bottom of that and then the top on the top of the knot I pressed down uh, I made sure it was wide enough that it wasn't it was easier to press down and once I did that you just wiggle this a little bit and it comes off For the next one I make sure I open the hood see I pull the windshield wiper towards me here so I bend it over here and now I got to take this out to do that again same thing uh, make sure you place your pliers in here and try to pull it off uh, or try to just try to find a way to to basically push the the bolt in as you pull this up. And you want to get off. You want to basically get this off from the car, and you got to basically pull it up because it's held in by little teeth. And uh, this is how the teeth look. Maybe you can see them in there. Uh, this side might be easier. Let's see. See those little teeth? That's what. That's basically what you're trying to remove from in there. All right. So I managed to remove both of them, both of the windshield wipers. So next, uh, let's work on that cover. So the cover is held in with clips. Uh, this is overlapping that one, so I'll try to remove this one first. And what you gotta do is you gotta basically pull on it with a little bit of force, so that the clips can unclip themselves from uh, the back of this cover. And um, We'll be able to to um, expose uh, this crawl area. So let's see if we can remove this cover. There we 
there it is. So this cover is out. got one out now we got to remove the second one over here uh, just in case I'll show you something so right here there's a little hose on this connector here now this hole this this connector here this hose is for the windshield wiper fluid this is where it comes through so just make sure you remove this one here uh, so that way uh, you don't pull it and break it so to do that you just basically separate one of those two I think this is the easiest one because as you can tell it's partially uh, removed so I'm just gonna pull it apart and um, um, once you pull that apart you should be able to uh, let me see if I can turn the phone somewhere if I can pull it. Yeah, so once you, what you want to do is you want to grab one and separate it from the other by pulling it apart like this and there you go, see? That's it. Now this is removed from the crawl cover. And now I'm gonna go all the way over there and take care of the other side. Now to remove, to uh, remove this metal plate here, I'm gonna have to take a few uh, screws off this or bolts uh, there's one here one there one there one there and all right well I ended up getting like a 12 inch uh, extension uh, that was the best the best one best thing I had here so I uh, just removed the 10 millimeter millimeter bolt and uh, you gotta remove all 10 of uh, all four of them and if I find another one, like I said, I'll, I'll let you know. But so far, I just remove all four. All right, well, uh, I'm gonna have to remove that whole uh, piece right here. Yeah, you're definitely gonna have to remove uh, these bolts. Uh, I remove this nut. I remove the nut here and the nut there. Three of them on this side. And I do the same on the other side, I'll show you. Um, you got one here, one there. And one there. So now that we have all three, this is actually loose. Now I don't think I have to take it completely off because all I need to do is I need to create room here for the cat to fall in there. And I think this is going to be enough. Right, now that this is uh, loose, I can actually pull it up and get it off the bolt if you want. The idea is that now we're going to use a 12 millimeter socket, go behind the motor. And try to remove the, the catalytic converter from here. And first bolt that I'm going to deal with is this one right here. Let me see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is, this is very tight. <clears throat> I'm going to use a breaker bar. I'm going to try to remove it. I removed the four bolts. And um, I mean the Ford, the Ford um, nuts, but then this nut came out with a bolt from the engine. So, which means to me is that uh, I'm gonna have to put it in exactly the same way again, and uh, and reuse it. There's actually a bracket down here on the bottom of the cat, and uh, you can tell there's a bolt right there. See, that's a bolt. Uh, it's a 14 millimeter bolt and then the bracket itself is attached right here to that that screw right there i mean that that bolt right there so we're gonna have to remove that bolt and uh remove that bolt take the bracket out so that i can remove that cat or maybe i can just loosen up this bolt right here and then take off that bolt from from the cat and then just move the bracket out of the way so i can uh 
I can remove the cat. So let's do that. Uh, I'm not gonna film this one until just uh, remove it, remove the bolts. All right, so the the bolt attached to the cat on the bracket that's 12, and the one attached to the bracket attached that is attached to the I think it might be the oil pan or something or part of the motor. That one is actually 14. I believe I I loosened it up. Let me see if it's loose. Yep, it's loose. So now I should be able to remove this whole piece here with the with the bracket on. 40 millimeter bolt out. Put it on the side. Bracket should be loose now. Everything should come off. So it's time to remove it. Alright, so this is a cat. Now the the bolts the the, the nuts are off. So now I'm gonna wiggle this cat out of here. Okay, so now I can remove this cat. It's coming out. See, there's a whole cat with the bracket. This is the old cat. As you can tell, it has a still has a bracket on. Gotta figure out a way to remove this bolt now. This is the heat shield that it comes with. Um, there's usually a gasket here, and that's a gasket that we got out of the second one. It was basically all burned. Uh, so it's time to remove that. And this is easy, you just gotta find a way to get a breaker bar and break this loose. So I all right, so the bracket is off. It took a, took a lot of uh, penetrating fluid and a lot of patience to remove it. I had to go back and forth, back and forth, so you can tell it's very rusted. So that's a new one from Honda. Identical, obviously, because it's OEM. And uh, you notice that this one doesn't have the heat shield that this one has. No biggie. All right, it comes in, I have it in another box. And um, this is the gasket for, for this catalytic converter. I'll put it inside that box. That's that uh, bolt that we out earlier. This is our heat shield right here. So, same exact one. And yeah, the part number if you care to get it. If you don't want to, it's fine. It. But um, same exact heat shield. These are the springs. These are the springs for those bolts that I just showed you. I can get the part number on it. There you go, that's the part number. So, the bolt, part number for the bolt. And uh, this is another string for the other bolt. This is the second bolt. So, we have that. This is actually the gasket for the first cat. Part number, and there's a gasket in there. So we will open that too. This is the second catalytic converter. And this is the second gasket, the one that goes attached to the exhaust. And uh, it's a part number for it. So that gas we're gonna open also. And uh, this is the second catalytic converter. And I, the good thing is that I have also the the nuts that goes with it. So I have that. I didn't get the nuts that go, that go with this one, so I'm gonna reuse those. I gotta reuse that, that uh, bolt right there. And I noticed I have the heat shield, but I have no no bolts for the heat shield, so I'm gonna try to see if I can remove those two. This one is completely rusted. There's no way I can get to that one. So I might have to just go and buy another bolt like this for my heat shield. And if that's the case, I'll probably buy all three and just, I'm not gonna reuse those because I don't like how they look and they look like they're pretty hard to take off anyway. So, um, so let's see if we can rebuild, put everything back together. Oh, and I forgot to mention uh, the part number for the second cat. So 
So here it is. And the part number for the first. It's uh, this one right here, 1890 REZ A01. That's for the first one. Alright, so new cat. I'm gonna put the T shield on. And uh, the I don't have I didn't have any any bolts for this, so I went to Home Depot. I picked up some temporary bolts, uh, M6, uh, 1.0, and um, this should do it for now. Until I go to the dealership and uh, pick up the actual bolt that I need for this. What I'm gonna do is I put this bolt on, just to have the heat shield on the on the car in case I need to use it. Alright, so there you go, three bolts. By the way, each one was like 79 cents. Very cheap. I'm oh, sorry, not each one, but the whole pack. It's like 79 cents. There you go. That's the one, those are the ones that I got. And I also got washers. Just in case, just so that I have some type of a uh, little bit of a separation between the heat shield and the, and the bolt. Now time to tighten them. Uh, 10 millimeter. It's knocked. You don't have to like over tighten them. I was looking for tor torque specs for everything here. Um, I can't find it anywhere, so I'm just gonna go by a feel. I'm just gonna turn it until I stop and then turn it at a quarter turn. Alright, so the gasket is here. This is the other gasket. This is the one that goes attached to the to where the cat um, is attached to the engine. And this other gasket is the one that goes down here. It goes attached to the other cat little converter. But just before, remember when we took this out, we never removed the gasket that was actually here. That should be on the car. And if you're looking here, uh, let's see if I can find it. Uh, well, you know, right here it is. Now that I removed it, so uh, as you can tell, the holes from the bolt on the top, they're, they're closer together than on the bottom. And that's how it is on the, on the cat. These two bolts here are actually closer than the ones on the bottom. And uh, for the gasket, the rounder part goes down. Like that. And you just push it in until it's knobbed. Clearly, if you have two hands, it will be easier, but uh, just push it in until it's knocked. And uh, this wire uh, mesh here, it helps it basically grab onto the outer uh, circular part of this. Uh, and then you just make sure it's knocked and put it back in there. So I'm going to make sure that's actually perfectly even. Right now it's not. You can tell this side is clo closer to this metal piece here than that side so i'm gonna adjust that on my own uh and the gasket again i'm gonna put that in the car all right the first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put the gasket uh on the car again the the holes that are closer to each other go up and the ones that are wider apart they go down and uh, i decided that i was gonna put the piece that has the flat area towards the engine uh, as opposed to the round uh Part of the pin now I got a feel for the bolts there should be bolts back here for, for when I remove the other gasket there they are so now I just gotta get this to fit right in gasket is in time to so I put the other cat behind the engine I think it will be easier if I put the, the second cat a little converter and then place that one right on top of it so that the the shield the 
the gasket right here can fit nicely right on top of it so that way I don't have to kind of like wiggle it around when I'm trying to install the one on the bottom so I'm going to try the one on the, the bottom first and then I will install this one all right so here we are with the second one uh, this is the gasket that goes with the second it looks identical on both sides so I guess it doesn't matter uh, which side you put towards uh, towards the catalytic converter but we have this is this is the side where it goes so it should fit right in here see right in that area there and it's supposed to create some type of seal some type of seal here so I'm gonna remove this this nuts here and uh, Put the gasket and try to install it right up there. See if we if it's easier or not. Let's see. All right, so I place the the cat through that area. Make sure the hole is to the right hand side, obviously, because that's where the sensor is gonna go. The O2 sensor is gonna go. And these are the bolts: one, two, and the three right on top. You tie in this. Um, very very like very uh, snug so so that um, the seal here is very nice and uh, even all around and make sure that the gasket is in there like I told you in that little in the circular gap that it goes against the cat and uh, that should do it that should be sealed and if you, as you can tell look at there's no gap in between the the exhaust pipe and the catalytic converter and uh, I just make sure that I turn them this nuts until they were uh, until I couldn't turn them anymore obviously you don't want to turn it really hard but uh, once you, you it stops then you just turn a quarter turn on each one we're done with this side now we gotta go to the second cap it's getting a little bit dark now but um, hopefully it will be a little bit more visible once I put the flashlight on. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, the, this cat here and I'm going to bring it down. Try to put it right on those holes where the bolts are. Again, I only have three that I can use right now, but later on when we start attaching things, maybe it's really helpful. Try to feel for the bolts, but because I already installed the second cat, I know where I'm gonna sit the first cat. This is what we have so far. I have not put the catalytic converter on the bolts. Let's see if I can shine a light down here. All right, there we go. Let's see, so so far I have not. Uh, put the cat on the bolt yet you can see you can tell you can see the gasket right there um, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna try to adjust it so that it fits right on it and uh, try to shift things around the cat, catalytic converter down there it's actually right under this cat as you can tell down there so let me see if I can adjust this See, every time I try to move this, can't see because of the I'm holding the phone on one side. But see, that one is in now. The second one is I have to push it right in like that. Bolt is in, and the bolt is in now on at least one side. Gotta wiggle it around so until I get the other ones in. But for now, that's kind of like the way you're supposed to set it up um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to put all the bolts in first um, into the cat now looking from under the car see the first cat is right there this is the second cat and all we gotta do is align this two 
right here before we even tighten this. We gotta do that too. Uh, there. So I'm gonna make sure that they align and then I'll be able to put the bolts uh, with the spring on it or where they need to go. So uh, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna focus on the top, align the holes to the bolts and then come down here. I'll put the, the bolts uh, and the nuts on the top, not tight, but just loosely so it doesn't come off. And then I'm gonna come down here and try to adjust this down here so that we get everything perfectly even before I start tightening bolts. All right, so let's put the bolts back on on the bottom since they're lined up so you can tell that they're more or less lined up right there. So I'm gonna take the bolt, put it where, where, right where it needs to be. Screw as much as I can in there. There we go. One in. The second one you're not going to be able to see because it's right behind it. But since you're going to be doing this, or if you are going to be doing this, I'm pretty sure you're going to remember where it needs to go. So, uh, go ahead and uh, try to. Find it and hand tighten it. And I'm gonna pause the video so I can use my other hand. Yeah, the bolts are in. See, there's one here, and the other one is on the other side right there. The way you put the second one in, if you don't, if you don't remember, is that there's a, a hole right there. Put your socket right through there with a bolt. Screw it in. As long as the holes are lined up up there, which they are. Now. Uh, time to start tightening up the bolts on the top now. Before I forget, we gotta put the bracket back on. Otherwise, uh, I'm definitely gonna forget. So let me just put the bracket on. And uh, just in case the bracket... The bracket is gonna go right on that hole right there that you see for the screw. Um, and... It goes from there and it attaches Let's see if I can move this out of the way so you can see it attaches right over right over there that, that other hole that you see there so um I'm just gonna put the bracket on and screw it back on. I'll show you the uh, looks after. The bracket is on. So that bolt right there was uh, 13 millimeter, and this one right here was 14 millimeter.